Hi, I'm Peter Sutton, Director of Planning and Business Development here at the Trust. Some colleagues will recall that during the COVID pandemic, myself and other colleagues used to provide regular videos outlining the pressures that we were facing as an organisation, uh, but also outlining some of the actions that we were taking. Myself and other colleagues also think now it's probably a good time to reintroduce those videos because again, we know that we're facing particular challenges uh, across the organisation, whether that's from a hospital point of view uh, or facing some of our community services. So we'd like to make sure that we keep you up to date with what's happening uh, across the Trust and outline some of the actions uh, that we're taking. As in COVID, we thought it was now the right time to re-establish what we call our silver meetings. Uh, these are meetings that take place on a daily basis and enable us to get real-time information in terms of some of the issues facing the organisation, but also enable us uh, to take actions in a, in a timely manner. We've also uh, started putting out more uh, communication, so again, we hope you find that useful in terms of the regular briefings and newsletters that we're sending out. We do appreciate at this moment in time it's really challenging uh, out there, whether that's in an acute setting, whether that's in our emergency department, whether that's in our wards or whether that's in our community services or a range of other services. We really do understand how tough it is and has been during these winter months. We're working really closely with some of our partners, as you say, across social care, because again, we know that some of the biggest challenges we face as an organisation is making sure that we maintain what we call patient flow, uh, so that means basically that patients can be discharged in a timely manner, uh, whether that's back to their own uh, home with a care package in place or to a care home, for example. So we're now making sure that we have those daily meetings with all of our partners, trying to make sure that we can take the actions to ease some of the pressures that you're facing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, as you'd have seen from the news and also locally, we've seen a big increase, particularly uh, before Christmas and as we headed into the new year in terms of the number of flu patients coming into the organisation. We also saw an increase in the number of uh, patients who had other respiratory infections, uh, as well as a small increase in COVID uh, patients. And when we were having such big numbers come through the organisation, clearly then we did need to take some action to try and increase the number of beds uh, that we had available across the organisation and also to try and improve what we call patient flow. So we do appreciate that we've had to take some of those decisions quickly uh, and we do appreciate that's impacted on a number of uh, uh, colleagues and some of the areas that they work in. And again, we really appreciate uh, your patience, your commitment, uh, and your flexibility in helping us open those areas at uh, such a short notice. We've also had to cancel some of our routine uh, elective operations and again that's never a decision that we take lightly and something that we ideally clearly would not want to do but we've really made sure that we've protected what we call our sort of urgent, our priority elective patients. So those are patients for example who are coming in uh, for a cancer operation. And we've been able to protect uh, you mean, enough capacity to make sure we've been able to deal with those patients uh, over the recent days and weeks, recent weeks. But again, we know uh, that's not an ideal uh, position to be in. Because of the increase in respiratory infections, because of the increase in the number of COVID patients that we've seen coming into the organisation, uh, you'll be aware that we did reintroduce some of our infection prevention control measures. Uh, so that included uh, things like obviously wearing face masks again in clinical areas. We tried to support some of our ED uh, colleagues by minimising the number of uh, visitors who come in with a patient, for example, into our waiting rooms. Again, as always, we'd always encourage every member of staff uh, to go and get you know, in your flu jabs. Uh, and again, there's lots of appointments available uh, for staff to book into. You can also clearly go and get things like the uh, COVID booster jab uh, with your local uh, GP. And again, as always, we'd encourage everyone to do that again, which will help reduce uh, the spread of infection. So as I said, we appreciate you know, being some of the actions that we've had to take, some of the decisions that we've had to make over the recent days and recent weeks um, are not the uh, ideal. And again, we really do appreciate everything that you do and thank you uh, for working with us on some of those uh, decisions that we've had to take. We know how challenging it has been for all staff across the organisation. Uh, and therefore we want to continue some of the support schemes uh, that we've put in place over the recent months uh, and recent weeks. Uh, we'll continue to offer uh, free car parking. 
We will continue the uh, deliveries going out to wards, departments, clinical areas, as well as community venues in terms of our health and wellbeing deliveries. In terms of the restaurants in, on the Sunderland site as well as the South Tyne site, we'll continue uh, to offer the discount in terms of the 50% discount in our uh, restaurants. In terms of staff who work night shift and who haven't been able to access some of those discounts during the day, we're going to start a trial with Just Eat uh, from the 1st of February and more details will come out of that shortly. But again, that's to try and support staff who are on night duty who can't access uh, some of our restaurants. We'll also continue to extend the Allocate on Arrival uh, incentive scheme. So we're currently running one scheme which is uh, an additional £100 payment and that will continue until uh, Friday the 3rd of February uh, with the £250 payment continuing until later on in the month. We do hope that some of these small schemes and small gestures if you like um, are helping staff on a day-to-day -day basis and this takes some pressure off you uh, as you go about your day-to-day -day business. So in terms of looking ahead Silver will continue to meet uh, on a daily basis and we'll continue to receive feedback uh, from our wards, departments and other clinical services. We'll continue to work with our partners across health and social care with that particular ambition in mind of making sure that we can achieve uh, patient flow, timely discharges back to patients' homes or community venues. It is important that you continue to look after yourself. It's important that you continue to look after colleagues, particularly at times when they're under significant pressure. We'd encourage anyone to access the various support services that we have in place across the organisation uh, to support your own uh, physical as well as mental well-being. We do know that the coming weeks and months will continue to be tough, although at this moment in time pressures are just starting to reduce ever so slightly. We know that may not continue, and again, we may find ourselves uh, in, under particular pressures over the coming days and weeks. So again, we just want to say a huge thank you from the board of directors, from the executive team, from myself, for everything that you and your teams continue to do to support our staff and deliver high quality safe care for our patients. Thank you.